good evening. This is Carolyn Borba, and I am here to talk about the praise, to talk about the royal priesthood, the activation that Will had written six pages about. You know, I did this assignment before I did anything else, and uh, I love Will's wisdom. I love his depth of understanding of the word. And so to put all of those six pages into one activation has been very challenging for me. And I wanted to say that I actually studied this um, before they told me I really didn't have to, but you know, I found that it was necessary to really get not the meaning that came very quickly, but to get the meat of the meaning so that I can properly, uh, honorably uh, present this to a group of people who I don't even have as yet, a team, but where I would want to use this as it was mentioned on the very first chat, the question was asked about where does it say dance in the New Testament? And you know that has stuck in me, in my mind, ever since that night. And I've looked and I've read and I've studied and I've thought about it and I've asked about it. And all I know is that from Genesis to Revelation, that the word worship is everywhere. Maybe not spelled the same way, but it's everywhere. And Will alludes to that. You know, just even on the first page, at the bottom of the first page, when, when he talked about, when he talked about the fact that we were not even redeemed, but the reason we were redeemed, that our hope is in Christ, and that would be to the praise of His glory. And that's why I have this chart. I must be from the old school. I always want to use a chart. When I taught things, I always used a chart. So the name of the dance team that God is putting together for me, I thought about it, prayed about it, and just kept thinking and thinking and thinking. And the faces of praise is so natural for me but I couldn't get the rest of it put together. And this says that Christ would be, that, our, that first our hope in Christ would be to the praise of His glory and to the praise. And I have written to, also unto His praise. That means that it's already happened. It's a fact. So we can either praise to His glory or we can praise unto His glory. But it's a fact that it is about praising His glory. So where I would want to use these six pages to begin with would be to help the church understand not the word dance. That's what frightens people. But the word worship. I would want the church to understand how when you study out the word worship or when you think about the royal priesthood, people worship those in royalty. If we don't worship, the word says the rocks will cry out. That's because we know who Christ is. So our worship comes more easily. But if we were talking about a church full of people who really do not have a heart for God, do not have a heart for Jesus, that they can't even within themselves, I don't care whether they raise their hands, that doesn't matter. What matters is their heart. Do they really feel the worship in their heart? Because that's what all of this study was about. I have these pages laid out before me. And when I first started to do um, the research, as I read through the, all the Psalms, I read through every one of those Psalms, 
that he forgives all my iniquities. He heals all my diseases. He redeems me, and he redeems me from destruction. He crowns me with kindness and tender mercies. He satisfies my mouth and, good, and gives me good things. The Lord executes righteousness for all who are oppressed. He, he made known his ways to man. The Lord is merciful. He's gracious. He's slow to anger. If we know those things about Jesus, if we really know those things, how can we not worship? So if I were doing an activation of this, first of all, I'd probably be jumping all over the place. But as a teaching of this activation, I would ask my team to separate these pages. If I had six people, I would give one page to each person. And I would say, you read this, you study this. You read this, study it, you read and study, you read and study, you read and study, you read and study. And we're going to come back together and on this board, we are going to put the common phrase that is gleaned out of these pages. And what we're going to find is nothing more than praise and worship. That's what God wants. He wants that intimate, personal relationship with us. And when we get that, we can't do anything but worship. When that music starts inside us, it's natural. It just comes up. For some people, it gets stuck right here. Their arms won't go up. Their eyes won't go up. Their mouth won't open to say the praise of worship, whether it's Greek or Hebrew. They won't say it. They won't say it. They won't take the manifestation of the Holy Spirit because they're trusting in themselves and not in Him. So that's how I would do the activation of this awesome study, and I can't wait to start the next one. But I can see the result of it, and I see the need in the church. I don't care whose church it is. The need is there. Not everybody will worship the same. But will you know, and I know, <laughs> and many other people know, it's warfare. That's what happens first, is the warfare. When we come in with a banner, when we come in with a flag, when the armies went before the, the soldiers, the warriors, they were doing warfare. And that's what we do. And that's what we need to learn in here. That that's what worship is. It's warfare. No matter how you do it. And I thank you for this study. And I'm excited to start the ne next one. And it's in his name we give blessings. Amen.